Welcome to the Sober Vibes Podcast. I'm your host, Courtney Anderson. I decided to end my decade-long love affair with alcohol in 2012 at 29 years old. I chose to live openly as a recovering alcoholic with honesty and humor while figuring it out one day at a time. This space will bring you weekly episodes of my own personal experiences with my addiction and sobriety, as well as me interviewing incredible souls who are living life without drugs and alcohol. This podcast is here to inspire you, empower you, uplift you, and bring you some laughter along the way in your own journey. Sit back, relax, and let's have a time. Welcome to the Sober Vibes Podcast. I'm your host, Courtney Anderson. You are listening to episode 62. Welcome, party people. I have a great guest today. She's also a friend of mine, and I'm excited for her to share her story. And you'll hear me a lot in this episode be like, this is why I love your story, because she is a perfect example of a high-functioning alcoholic, high-functioning to the T. And, you know, because a lot of people just think when it comes to drinking and drug use that, you know, especially too with drinking, that that you have to be like bottom of the barrel scumbag <laughs> or what media has portrayed and all of that. And, and I did say, too, in this episode how, you know, high functioning ones are the worst And I was high functioning as well. And it's just because it's the whole thing of like, well, I'm not hurting anybody. But there you are like pounding fists of vodka or waking up and and, and drinking to get rid of the shakes, all that jazz. So my guest today is Jennifer Golden. She has a huge Instagram account called Recovery Her Way. And she is a mother to her son and is also kicking ass in her new skincare business which I always love to see a woman entrepreneur and hustling that because it, it's a great thing when you create something out of nothing and then you see your business grow and grow and grow. So definitely, 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 I hope you enjoy this show. First two, before we get into the show, just want to thank our sponsor Organifi and it is a supplement company. Easy, easy, easy. I've said it before in this pregnancy, I'm not digging vegetables and I will continue on with this for sure afterwards because I feel really good as well. Continuing to feel good minus the bed rest stuff, but it's the greens I use, greens powder. I just put it in water each day. You can also put it in your shake and I'm getting all of my greens in and just adding very good, good, good ingredients into my body. It's certified um, organic, non-GMO, vegan, dairy-free, soy-free, and it's the jam. So check it out. They have a whole line of supplements too. They even have a liver detox, which would be good for any of us, (laughs) especially to just healing your body through sobriety and recovery. And you have to do that on the inside. I can't You have to give love to these organs that you fucked up for so long. And I have to say that because it is the truth, you know. It took me a while after getting sober to get my body, my stomach back in line, all of that. It's a process. And this is definitely a way for you to give some TLC to the inside, you know, because I know right now, too, you could be probably eating some candy at night and and all of that, or two, you're just at a point in your recovery where you're like, what do I do next? I'm ready to take this next step with starting to treat my body correctly. And this is where I say, look into the supplement line and get your 20% off by using discount code sober vibes. And let me know how it goes for you. I've had some people reach out saying that they really, really like the greens as well. And it's very convenient. I used to be a huge juicer celery juice and this is way cheaper than that and just not as time consuming (laughs) so just add it to cold water or your favorite beverage so that is organifi.com slash sober vibes or find the link in the show notes and remember too if you have not joined my sober focus coaching community group coaching program please do so it is good for anybody newly sober 
or trying to work on their emotional sobriety in that program. We do it all. I have workshops each month and four meetings as well. So check it out. I hope you enjoyed today's show with Jennifer because she is a ray of light. Enjoy. Hey, Jen. Thanks for being on the show today. Hi, Courtney. Thank you so much for having me. I'm super excited to be here. I know. I'm excited you are here too. And again, I said it when we pre-talked, but thank you for rescheduling with me during my pregnancies. Yeah, ups and you downs. have a few things going on, so I get it. <laughs> Oh, man, it's just very hard to talk when you feel like you want to uh, vomit all day. So I am very excited, like I said, to have you on the show because I love your story. And so why don't you tell us when you got sober? What date? So I got sober, I'm going to say for good, <laughs> or the one that really stuck home because there's been a lot of like attempted sober dates. Yes. But this one was eight 12, 15. So in August, I will have six years of continuous sobriety, which I still can't believe. <laughs> right. Because I remember getting um, that first 24 hour chip and going, there's, I mean, I can't even make it 24 hours without drinking. So mm-hmm. six years is, is pretty unbelievable. It is. It's a, it's a huge accomplishment. And, and I think as the years go by, they just get better and better. And you learn more Mm -hmm. and more about yourself. Oh yeah. So what brought you to the point of saying no more with alcohol for the final, final time for the final, final time? Well, I, like I said before, I had tried to quit multiple times. Like I knew I, I knew I needed to quit, but my brain kept telling me that it didn't want to quit. And so I always fought against myself knowing what I needed to do versus what I wanted to do. So every time I would get sober for a little bit, a few months here and there, I'd be like, okay, my brain would go, Hey, you can have another drink. You've went three months without it. You can go ahead and moderate your alcohol. And that's not the case for me. I moderation is not a word in my vocabulary. Mm So what happened is I had kind of a final spiral after my last attempted sobriety. I had met a guy. I had lied to him about that. I was trying to get sober because I was kind of embarrassed. I wasn't kind of embarrassed. I was embarrassed because it was embarrassing for me to tell people that I had an alcohol problem. So I told him, Oh, I'm just trying to, I'm trying to be healthy for 60 days. I'm on a health kick. I'm trying to lose some weight. I'm not drinking. And he just kind of kept pressuring me until I finally one day just said, okay, you know what? I'm done. I'm going to just drink with him. And that kind of started this final spiral downhill And when I mean downhill, I mean, it got to the point where my body physically needed alcohol to function during the day. Uh And when I say function during the day, I was still a mom. I was still working a job. I was still good at my job. I just drank throughout the day, all day, a steady stream of alcohol. And it started when I would wake up in the morning. Sometimes at three o'clock in the morning, I'd have to go to the bathroom and I'd get sick, even though there was no food in my stomach. And then I would be up the rest of the day. And if I had alcohol in the house, I'd have to drink it because I was shaking so bad. If I didn't have alcohol in the house, I'd have to wait till they sell alcohol here in Texas, which is 7 a.m. on the weekdays Mm -hmm. and on Saturday And I'd have to go to the store and buy like a 24 ouncer to get my body into check. So it wouldn't shake anymore. And every day I told myself, okay, I feel better now. So I'm going to stop. I'm not going to drink anymore today, but I just kept going all through the day. I'd put drinks in a solo cup. I'd put them in a Sonic cup. I would, I'd actually have a diet Coke can and pour out some of the diet Coke and pour in vodka into the diet Coke can. So it looked like I was just drinking a diet Coke. There were all sorts of tricks. So this time I spiraled for about eight months and it was literally getting to the point where I I thought I was probably going to kill myself if I didn't quit Mm -hmm. or maybe someone else, depending on if I was driving or not. So on a particular Tuesday, I had had some drinks to steady my nerves and I something came over me. I I guess God intervened. Something came over me and I pulled to the side of the road and I said, I am going to kill myself. And I called my friend, like I wasn't going to commit suicide. I said, if I keep drinking, I'm going to kill myself. Right. And I called my friend who 
I had had a few confidants during this time that knew I was really struggling and I called her and I started crying. I'm like, I've had, I've had a six pack before 10 o'clock in the morning of beer on a Tuesday. And that was it. I, I said no more. (laughs) And that's, that's, that's what happened. So it's not a typical rock bottom story, but I was definitely a rock bottom because I was living an awful, awful life. Yes. And what, I love about your story is that you were, and I've said this to you, you were high functioning, but yes, you didn't, your rock bottom wasn't like disastrous. And I think that that's what people think that they have to have some type of like disastrous rock bottom for them to change. Right. Yeah. I mean, I was, I worked, I, like I said, I was a mom. I, I made dinner was everything like 20 times harder? Like my energy level was so bad to make dinner was like dragging, like imagine being having COVID really bad and trying to do something. That's what I felt like every time I tried to do something that was important for my son, <laughs> Yeah, because I just had no energy. My, all my energy was gone. Like drinking like that takes such a toll on your body. I was wasting away. Like it was bad. And I'm so grateful and blessed and thankful that that Tuesday happened because I don't even know if I would have been here today if that had not happened. Oh yeah. And that's where people's drinking leads them. Mm-hmm. And you know, you know that intuitively because you were the only one of like who knew it that bad. I say that with my drinking. It was like it was just always it was Russian roulette when you picked up the bottle to drink. I mean, even long term effects of what alcohol does to the body. Absolutely. Yeah. It was, you know, and And just the danger every day of what I was doing to myself, you don't even really think about when you're doing it because Mm -hmm. we feel invincible, right? Mm -hmm. Like, oh, that's not going to happen to me or this isn't going to happen to me, but it it can happen to you and it, and it will happen to you if you're not careful. (laughs) Right. So then, so on that Tuesday, did you go into rehab or no? I don't think I would suggest that to someone who was having some physical withdrawals like I was, but that was just where I was at that time. Uh Uh-huh. And then about a week later, as I was starting to kind of feel better, and again, every day was a struggle not to just pick up that bottle because picking up the bottle or the wine or the beer would have made all my symptoms go away for that day, but it ultimately would not have helped anything. So just staying away from that bottle for that day was, was those days was really hard. Uh And even the first couple of years, it's hard, right? And even longer, depending on how your, how your sobriety is going. But about a week later, I was driving by a gym and I said, I need to join a gym. I need to do something to get rid of this, this, I have nothing to do with myself right now. Like all my energy before was, you know, when am I going to get a drink? What store can I go to, to get a drink? How can I hide this drink? What can I do with this drink? You know, when can I get the next one? So I had to have something to do with my energy. So I joined a gym And I went, I went a lot because I had read that it, those endorphins that you get from working out would help replace kind of the initial endorphins you get when you first take that first drink. It's kind of your, like a natural high, the working out. So I, and I didn't have any idea what I was doing. I just went and I looked at Pinterest and looked at exercises and I just worked out. (laughs) And then I found a therapist who actually was a a friend of mine recommended because of my divorce, because I'd had a pretty hard divorce. And my friend recommended her and my friend did not know this, but my therapist has, was a recovered alcoholic for 30 years. So we did a lot of work together. So again, another little God intervention with that therapist, bringing her into my life because she really did. She really did change my life. Mm Mm-hmm. Which is nice. Yeah. I always love when therapists have, have issues like that as well, or came from an alcoholic home. (laughs) I don't don't mean mean to laugh about it, but it's just, it's so much, I mean, they get it. So it's just, it's so much more relatable to have that connection with somebody who's helping you out like that. Yeah. I I didn't even go to her for that reason, but it came out in the first visit because I was still, I was still in shambles. You know, I was still in shambles trying to recover from all this and it just came out on the first visit. And when she told me her story, which was incredible, um, it just was like, this was meant for me to meet her. And it was meant for me to work with her. 
because we, we almost worked the steps like you do in AA, but I didn't, I didn't want to go to AA this time. Mm -hmm. I had just had a couple of bad experiences. It just wasn't for me. I know it helps a ton of people. I have some really good principles from my time there, but so we kind of worked the steps like we did at AA and really worked on the underlying reasons of my drinking. And it was just, it was incredible. And I saw her for about seven months. That's great. Yeah. She was, she was there for you and it all worked out as you said. Yes. So with you, I want to talk about aging in sobriety because you are doing a really good job at this. Oh, thank you. <laughs> you are. So kind of, you know, going into the aging, aging process in sobriety, I, I really do think that we all people who quit drinking, it's like we have the Benjamin buttons, like the reverse, we start right. aging backwards. But you, you kind of started this with taking care of yourself with joining that gym without within that first week. Yeah, I did. And, you know, I, if, when people ask me for advice on, you know, people always want to go, well, how do you get sober? Well, I can't really answer that for you because right. it really is so individualized. I mean, how you get sober is you just don't drink for that day and you just keep not drinking for that day. But how you go about not drinking for that day is different for everybody. And yes. I, but I do always suggest find a hobby, mm -hmm. you know, crochet, walk, yoga, Pilates, gym, something that keeps you busy <laughs> mm -hmm. because it's really important. And luckily the gym for me, it stuck with me. And not only did it have great mental, you know, it was a great mental release, but also it, it worked on my body too, because I neglected myself in sobriety. Like I said, my energy level was low. There were days I didn't want to take a shower. Like taking a shower was the worst thing I did at some point, but it was not a priority. Eating wasn't a priority. Exercising was definitely not a priority. I wouldn't even thought about exercising. Drinking was my priority. So I had to find a new priority. And when I started working out, I started feeling better. When I started getting a few months into sobriety, I noticed my skin was brightening up and I was actually looking younger than I did before, which I think is why these, you see so many transformation mm -hmm. pictures because it's really incredible. Like how you go from looking older when you're in your thirties to looking younger in your forties is pretty um, unbelievable. And I started eating better and actually nourishing my body with food instead of booze. Mm -hmm which is not nourishing your body at all and just started loving myself. And I think that was the biggest thing for me is I knew that I was important and I started loving myself, which I didn't love myself before. Yeah, it, it is a thing. Cause you feel like you don't deserve it. And I had, I do have to say, I love, love, love your before and after picture. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I, do, I do. I mean, when you look at people's before and after pictures, you're just like, man. And anytime when you do yours, I was like, good for her. Because <laughs> yeah, I mean, and no, I guess, you know, people, I think sometimes people think they're like too old to change their life. And you're just not. I mean, I was in my mid 40s when I got sober, and I'll be 50 this month. How exciting. And I, I feel better than I ever have. And I, I can't even, I'm like, I don't even think I'm getting going to be 50. Like it's not bothering me. I'm like, I'm aging gracefully. And it's all because of, because I chose myself and I chose sobriety over the life I was living. Yeah. Well, for sure. Well, I like that point that you just made too, because I think for women, especially when you get past, I, I don't know, because I'm not there, but I just hear it from people. It's something after 45 where it just, they just feel like it's not, it's too late for them. I, I've heard yeah. this, I've heard this from many women before where it's just like, well, I'm just stuck in my ways. It's like, well, but you're still alive. <laughs> yeah. You know, I mean, at 50, you can change, you can change yourself and reinvent yourself at any age. I have, re yeah, I have totally reinvented myself into like, I, I am doing um, Pilates teacher training so I can become a Pilates instructor, which I never would have done that ever. And I'm, like I said, I'm almost 50 mm -hmm. and there's nothing wrong with reaching beyond your comfort zone and trying new things, no matter what age you are, because like you said, you're still alive mm -hmm. and there's still a lot of life to be had out there. And you know, we've already worked so hard on this sobriety thing. We might as well just keep growing and evolving and becoming our best self. 
Right, exactly. And I think that's what people need to understand is just like change is scary and it's hard, but if you don't ever try anything, you're never going to know what it was like. Exactly. So, but, so how many days a week in the beginning did you start working out? Did you go every day? <laughs> did. <laughs> oh, but I, mean, yeah, I went every day. Like I just needed to be at the gym and it was also good for me at the time because my son was younger. Mm-hmm. He's 13 now. And so like he can be on his own, but back then he couldn't. So it was kind of a good time for me to take him to the kids club also. And he could kind of play with the kids in the kids club and I could kind of decompress a little bit. Sometimes I went twice a day, depending on how bad that day was, but it was my release. And I know that's not feasible for everybody um, and not everybody's going to go that route. But for me, that's what worked. And, you know, I just, picking up the weights and I got better. I got more comfortable in the gym and just being in that environment where there's other people around me working out. I like to be around other people. I'm not a good home gym person Mm -hmm. because I like to be around other people. It kind of helps me get motivated and I see what other people are doing. So all of that combined just really helped my mental state. So yeah, I went every day and it kind of continued. Like I still go every day, at least do some kind of exercise every day, six years later. (laughs) <laughs> which is amazing, which is a great, you got yourself into uh, a very positive, healthy habit to replace a very negative one. Correct. Well, uh, so reverse on this real quick, but how did you do with COVID not being able to go to the gym? Well, so with COVID, actually, I did make a gym in the garage. Okay. And because my name, last name's Golden, I, I put a little sign up that said Golden <laughs> Garage Gym. Like I was all set. We had a bench and some bands and we just, I just modified everything I did. And I walked every day around yep. the neighborhood, which was nice to get outside during COVID. Right. Mm-hmm. So I did, I did work out at the house. Like I said, it's not my favorite thing to do because I just like to be around other people, but we clearly couldn't be around other people. Right. Um, And I was, I have to tell you, I was so grateful that I wasn't drinking during COVID because I would have gone nuts. Nuts. Like I would have just been drinking all day. Mm -hmm. Like not that I didn't already, but I, but in the open, I would have been doing it. Mm -hmm. And um, so I'm so grateful that I was sober. And I know there was a big increase in alcohol issues during COVID. Mm -hmm. Because that's how people cope, right? Oh, yeah. You know, you drink, you drink. Shoot, I drank if I was celebrating. I drank if I was sad. Uh (laughs) Everything was, well, let's drink. I had a long day. I deserve this. You know, know what you deserve is to love yourself and to be healthy and not to not to drink alcohol. That's not a way to celebrate. (laughs) Right. I I told my husband, I was like, if I was still drinking during this, this house would have burned burnt down. (laughs) Yeah. Right. (laughs) We would have had the police over here for domestic violence because I would. that's what's what's so scary about a lot of people in COVID. That's exactly what happened. I mean, you know, I, like I said, super grateful for my sobriety during that time. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So because plus two, Besides your fitness journey, within the past year, I would say you have also transformed your skin. Yeah. So about about a year, well, a little over a year ago, I found a couple that was selling these products and I bought a few of them and it's a skincare company mm-hmm. called New Skin. And I started buying the products from them and I bought the toothpaste first and then some other stuff. And I really was, I really needed to do something to my skin because like I said, I neglected it so long. Not only did I drink, I I totally skipped this part. I was a huge smoker too. Mm -hmm. Like, and I didn't even quit smoking until I was sober for two years. So combine the effects of drinking all day, plus the effects of smoking, everything was a wreck. You know, I finally realized that smoking was just as much of a prison as alcohol. It got to be just the same. So I was like, I'm done with this. So my skin was not, was not pretty. And my teeth really weren't very pretty. And it was time to start taking care of myself and to put some effort into my skincare. And so I started buying these products and my skin started to transform because they're amazing. I think, I think the best thing I ever did for my skin was buy a device called a Luma spa, which actually gives you like a little facial every day. And it just reverses age, your aging, you age backwards. It's amazing. So I started 
really looking into my skincare. I started worrying about the rest of my skin, like hydrating and just my whole body was important at this point. And then I started selling the products. <laughs> so I became a member of that company and everything I use is about self-care. I think so many people think self-care is selfish, Yeah, but we do, but you can't love people the way they deserve to be loved. If you don't love yourself the way you deserve to be loved mm-hmm. and that and self-care can be a spa treatment or a nice long hot bath or journaling or reading or taking a little bit of time for yourself so that you can re-energize yourself so you can give to other people. And so these products and the time I'm taking to fix my skin, I think I look younger now than I did at 40, to be honest. Yeah, you do. Your before before and after pictures of your face too are impressive. (laughs) Yeah, thank you. They're great. (laughs) So it's just, you know, I just want to, I just want to be the best version of me and I want to live a long time and I want to be there for my son. Like I said, he's 13. I want to be healthy and spry, I guess you can say as yeah. I grow older. I mean, I know that I used to think 50 was so old Yeah, <laughs> and here I am about to be 50. So, but I don't feel like I am. Um, in fact, I kind of feel like everybody's my age and that when I find out they're in their thirties, I'm like, Oh, okay. I guess I thought I was too. <laughs> right. right. Exactly. So, so what, so what would you say, how are you aging gracefully in your sobriety? We'll end it with that because I think it's just, you are doing such a fabulous job with it. Well, I continue to exercise. Mm-hmm. And like I said, I added Pilates to my repertoire. We had a new studio that opened it was supposed to open during COVID and it didn't. And then it opened a few months later and I had never done Pilates before. I was a, when I go to the gym, I do weights yeah. mostly and a little bit of cardio. And I thought, well, this, I've heard Pilates is amazing for lengthening and strengthening your core and just working parts of the body that I don't necessarily want to work at the gym, like my abs. I, I never did ab work at the gym. So I tried I tried the Pilates class. They had like a free intro and it was so empowering. It was, it was, it was a fun exercise. You're laying down a lot of the time. So it's really good on your joints. I met some amazing ladies at the studio. So I've been going there now for over a year. I'm coming up on 250 classes that I've taken. Oh, wow. I know it's crazy. I'm incorporating Pilates into my gym work. And Pilates is good for your mind too, because you have to really think and reflect and almost like yoga is, is good for your mind. Pilates is the same. Mm -hmm. So I've incorporated that. Like I said, I'm taking care of my skin. I I've been doing intermittent fasting, Mm -hmm. which I love. Like I never thought I would love it, but I don't eat until nine in the morning and I don't eat past seven. Nice. And it has given me so much energy and because your body kind of goes through ketosis as you don't eat throughout the evening. And Uh so you, I mean, I've lost my midsection, which I, the one thing that does happen is when you hit 50, (laughs) you kind of go into what's called perimenopause or menopause. And my area of, of, I guess my problem area, which I don't think anybody really has problem areas, but if you're going to call it problem area was kind of my midsection. That's where all my weight would go when I did like fall off the wagon of eating. And I kind of found a hormone doctor. I had my hormones checked. And like I said, the intermittent fasting has really worked for my body. I drink a gallon of water a day. So that helps your skin hydration. Also, I think growing old gracefully, (laughs) And sobriety is all about taking care of yourself. Yeah, I was going to say. And making yourself a priority because Mm -hmm. no one wants to age, right? I mean, women go through that ageism thing. Like men age and they're handsome and they're debonair and they're distinguished. And women get gray hair and we're just look old. Mm -hmm. But it's just all about taking care of yourself. And so all of those things combined. And plus just, I have... One thing that's happened to my sobriety is I was still pretty angry, like the first maybe year, couple of years of sobriety, Mm -hmm. not angry to where it made me not 
not want to be sober, but like, why can't I drink like a normal person? Like, I don't understand why this had to happen to me. Right. And as I went on through my sobriety, my, I've grown so much internally that now I don't let anything really bother me. Like I kind of do that rule of, well, if this doesn't going to bother me in a year, it shouldn't bother me now. Right. So I've changed my attitude a lot of, of really embracing the serenity prayer, which is, you know, I can't control everything. And so why do I want to sit here and worry about things I can't control? Exactly. Because all that does is, is bring you down and worrying is super stressful. And I've adopted the, that mantra of I'm worth good things. Good things are going to come my way. I've really adopted the law of attraction principles. Mm-hmm. And I try to live that way now. And I didn't do that before. In mm-hmm. fact, when I, I had something really pretty, tr- pretty bad happen in January. And my friend was like, God, you are so different. You would have been, you would have acted totally different if this had happened two years ago. Right. And so I think as you continue through your sobriety, you're going to even grow more and more on a spiritual level to where you really can become the best version of yourself. Mm-hmm. I agree with you 100%. Because it shifts. And like when we were pre-talking, you know, like where you are today is not where you are with the first year of sobriety. Each year in your recovery, you grow as a person, you're faced with challenges that year, you learn from them, and you just evolve. Yeah, you totally do. And I I think one thing I want to say to your listeners, like if you are in your first, you know, year, 30 days, 60 days, whatever, I know that you probably get this a lot too, Courtney is like, Oh, you've got six years. Like that's so amazing. Yeah. It's amazing. But you know, what's amazing is having 30 days because that's hard. It's hard to get through that first year. So it's great to aspire to have six years or how long do you have? Like 12 in August, it will be nine. Nine. Okay. I was, Uh I was putting a little head, but that's like, that's amazing. But like those first 30, 60, 90 days, those are so, those milestones are so huge Yes, because that is just the hardest point. I think of sobriety is through that first year and sometimes even into the second. Uh So I remember, I remember hearing in AA when I was going way before, like, Oh, just keep going. The miracles will happen. And I kept going, when the heck are these miracles going to (laughs) happen? Because they are not happening right now. Uh-huh. And they really do happen. Uh-huh. Like they really do happen. Well, so it's, a, it's, just... a, it's a compound effect of, of, of every day of not deciding not to drink and adding on top of that. And then after you get those 30, 60, 90, and then you're at the year and you're like, okay, cool. I made it. And then you start seeing your progress and the miracles do start happening. Mm-hmm. They really do. But it is that first year of sobriety is tough. It's tough. Absolutely. It's so. tough because in, as you said, when you were saying how you were angry, those first couple of years, I call that the grieving process. Mm-hmm. You have to, you have to grieve that relationship you had with alcohol and the person you once were in the, the whole, because you still victimize yourself because even in active addiction, you think of yourself as a victim from my point of view, oh, yeah, no, I agree. <laughs> you know, like w- w- the world shit on you, the, this, 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 cause all of your resentments you have from when you were a kid, like it, it's just, the list can go on. And so when you get sober, you have to work through that. For sure. Yeah. That's I mean, why you- when, when people ask like, well, what did you do to get sober? It's just like, people want to, people want to know the magic answer. There's no magic answer other than I chose not to drink that day. Yep. Absolutely. You know, and then the next day I chose again and then the next day, the next day and I, my, continued, and I continued. Yeah. Yeah. Like your, why has to be your, why has to be your, your compass, you know, your North star. So. Yeah. And I think you just have to be ready. Yeah. Like, and a lot of mine was an ego issue. Mm-hmm. Like I had to put that ego aside and and I think that probably six years ago and even more nine years ago, people really weren't talking about sobriety. It was kind of a hush hush thing. Like, yeah, there were so many resources now and so many people are talking about it on different podcasts like yours, yours, your, your worldwide. People are hearing you worldwide talk about sobriety. You know, people are on Instagram talking about it. People are wearing shirts that say sober mom. You know, there's all sorts of 
it's, I don't know if it's more accepted now, but it's more talked about because really more people than you know, struggle with it. I mean, every time I talk about my sobriety on Facebook or Instagram, someone I had no idea was struggling and comes and says, oh my gosh, thank you so much because I'm going through this too. Oh yeah. I mean, and the- so like just knowing that you're not alone, because I always felt like I was alone. Mm-hmm. Like that was one of the hardest things for me was I'm the only one that goes to different convenience stores and buys little small things of wine and drinks them in the car. But I'm not, <laughs> no. Um, unfortunately. So just to know that there's a big community out there now, I think is really different than it, it was, you know, even six, seven, eight years ago. Well, it totally is. I mean, same thing with the, me- the mental health conversation did not get start getting introduced until these past 10 years, you know, so it's just like, this is just going to take some time. Yeah. You know, it's just, it's because previous to that, it's like nobody really was dep- talking about depression or anxiety. Mm-mm. So it's just because, I mean, mental health and addiction go together, but it's just one of those things where it's like, it will, it will evolve and, you know, people will understand that there's other people out there living sober, thriving, good lives where it's like, okay, there's life after addiction. There absolutely is life after addiction. There's a wonderful life after addiction and addiction doesn't have to define you. Like, you know, the stigma that, that comes around alcoholism is still there. I think that mm-hmm. it's getting better, but you know, you don't have to call yourself an alcoholic. You don't have to be an alcoholic to want to quit drinking. There's, there's all sorts of reasons to quit drinking. So just find your why, like you said, and make it happen. Exactly. Exactly. So where can people find you? Well, I'm on Instagram. I haven't been on in a few months, but I'm going to make a comeback. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, My Instagram is at recovery her way. And my name is recovery her way because I want people to know that there's lots of different avenues to sobriety, not just one. There's not one that works for everybody. Yeah. Um, Just like there's not one diet that works for everybody. Right. You know, there's lots of avenues towards sobriety. So that was why I chose recovery her way. I have a beauty group on Facebook for my skincare products. It's called beauty dreams with Jennifer and it's dreams with a Z. And I know you're part of that. Thank you. Yes. Yes. <laughs> and, the Luma Spa is um, wonderful. The Luma Spa is wonderful. Mm-hmm. I agree. <laughs> and you were worried about using it because of your sensitive skin. Oh yes. Because I cannot remember the, the pro I told you, I got something years ago and it made my skin more irritated. That was, it was similar to that, but it wasn't that. And then, so this it's been fine. That's great. Yeah. So that's where you find me on Facebook and I'm here to talk if anybody needs to. Yes. Wonderful. And I did like, I do like your handle on Instagram. Cause I remember you telling me one time, I think somebody was giving you some guff about not participating in AA and you're like, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> like, yeah. I, God, I, told I, me I wasn't really sober because I didn't do AA. I was just a dry drunk. And I'm like, excuse me. <laughs> like, right. And you're, you're like, I put in some work with, with the therapist, you know, as you just explained. And I remember you telling me that, and that is the truth. It's just like, because you choose not to go one avenue does not mean that you're not doing your own work of seeking professional help, which still people should do, even if they're going to AA. Exactly. Because yeah. there's there's so much underneath the surfaces that you are not going to get in in uh, the program like you would working with a one on one therapist. Totally agree. Yeah. Okay. So, but yeah, did, that did happen. It was uh, early on in my in, early on in my sobriety. He's like, well, "You're not really sober," and I was like, "Well, I don't think we should judge people." <laughs> <laughs> really made me mad. We're all here on this journey together. So, if you choose rehab, a, a therapist, if you want to do it on your own, if you have a group, a church group, maybe that has a program. There's all sorts of stuff out there that will work for somebody. Everyone can find their niche. Let's just put it that way. Totally. Totally. All right. Well, Jennifer, thank you so much for being here and sharing your story. And it's always, it's always fun chatting with you. Well, I have enjoyed it. And I thank you for having me on. You are welcome. Have a good day. All right. You too.